Hi, Mike Gaben here with some more KSP math. Are you tired of having to perform rescue missions because you didn't give the original vehicle enough fuel to get home? If so, this is the video for you. In the original tutorial, I used the stock Kerbal X vehicle to show how to do transfers to Kerbin's two moons, the Moon and Minmus, finally leaving our crew in low orbit about Minmus ready to perform a landing. For the math today, we'll look at establishing a delta V budget for the mission and how to use the rocket equation on a multi-stage rocket to ensure we have enough delta V to get the job done. So without any further delay, let's do the math. In this let's do the math, we'll look at establishing a delta V budgets for the missions that you just saw. And then we'll look at the rocket equation once again to work out the total delta V that is available to use in the Kerbal X. To work out our budget, we'll use this delta V map, which is available on the KSP wiki. This map is rather set up like a subway map. To get the delta V required for a mission, all you have to do is follow the route to where you want to go and add up the delta Vs along the way. We'll start at Kerbin. According to the map, to get to low Kerbin orbit requires 3,400 meters per second of delta V. Next is our transfer to the moon, 860 meters per second, and then 310 meters per second for the capture. That takes care of what you saw today, but I want to make this a land to return mission. According to the map, it's 580 meters per second to land. We'll go with this number, but a quick piece of advice. Unless you are brilliantly efficient at landing, I'd budget an extra two or three hundred meters per second more than this. Okay, so now we're on the surface of the moon and we want to get back. Thankfully, these numbers are all the same in the reverse direction. It's 580 meters per second gets us into low lunar orbit, and then another 310 meters per second ejects us from the moon's SOI and sends us back towards Kerbin. It turns out that is all we need. We don't have to burn fuel to lower our cells into a low Kerbin orbit and then land because Kerbin's atmosphere and our parachutes will do that for us. Adding this all up gets 6,040 meters per second. All right, let's do min miss. Again, 3,400 meters per second for low KO, then 930 meters per second for the transfer. The 340 meters per second represents the maximum you would need to spend for the plane change. But since we dealt with the inclination during our initial ascent, we need not worry about this number. 160 for the capture and 180 for landing, and then of course, those same numbers again to get back to Kerbin. That gives us a total of 510 meters per second. Well, does the Kerbal X have what it takes to get our brave crew home after their Minmus landing? Or are they going to be in need of a rescue? To find out, we're going to use the rocket equation that I derived in episode 4. All we need to work out the delta V for any stage are three numbers. The mass at the beginning of the stage, the mass at the end, and the combined ISP of the engines. The Kerbal X has a total of five stages. I'll number them 0 through 4, with 0 being the final stage. Let's start with stage 4. In the VAB, we'll open up the engineer's report and remove the launch clamps as they don't fly with us. We have a total mass of 130.42 tons, as you can see right here. Now, when stage 4 is done, these two radial boosters will be empty. So to find out what the final mass is going to be, all we need to do is take out all the liquid fuel and oxidizer from these two radial boosters. Now there is a matching one over here on the other side, but you can see that when we drain one of them, we actually drain the other one thanks to the symmetry that was used. Anyway, so we can now see that our final mass is going to be 118.42 tons. We now need the ISP of the engines. The radial engines are LVT45 swivels. We can look over here and see that they have an ISP in vacuum of 320 seconds. But we have a different engine here as well. So let's get rid of the information about the swivels. 
Here we go there and take a look at here. Here what we have is an REM3 mainsail engine and when we take a look at it, it has an ISP of 310 seconds. What we need is their combined ISP. And this is given to us by this formula. This formula has a pretty straightforward derivation, but I fear this video is getting too long, so I'll put it off to another time. The F1, F2, etc. is the thrust of the engines. For the swivels, that's 215 kilonewtons, and it's 1500 kilonewtons for the mainsail. Sticking the numbers into the formula and pushing through a calculator, we get 315 seconds. Don't forget to count all six of those swivel engines. We now plug our numbers into the rocket equation to get 298 meters per second for that stage. When this stage is done, we discard these boosters, so we'll just take them off to get the starting mass for our next stage of 112.87 tons. Using the same process as before, we get a final mass of 100.87 tons. With only four swivels now, we have to recalculate the ISP, getting 314 seconds, and plugging into the rocket equation gets us a delta V of 346 meters per second for that stage. It's a pretty simple matter to keep repeating this process for each of the five stages, which yields the following chart. Adding up all the available delta Vs, we get a total available delta V of 6,205 meters per second. Recall that the moon mission's budget was 6,040 meters per second. That would be tight, but entirely doable. However, we left our crew in orbit about Minmus, and the total budget for that mission was 5,010 meters per second. So we have over 1,000 meters per second to spare we can now be fairly confident that we should be able to get the Kerbal X down to the surface of Minmus and then back to Kerbin. But that's going to have to be for the next tutorial. I thank you for watching and hope to see you then.